Today we're making barricades, a great place for your gerblings and your berg bears to hide and shoot your players. Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. I am going to build these cool little wooden spiky barricades. When I did my battle mat video, I laid out a bunch of scatter terrain on the battle mat. And of course, a lot of people asked me about those pieces. One of those pieces were the little barricades that I used for the goblins to hide behind. So I've been meaning to make these on the channel. Also, when I made that one, I only made one. And that is the worst mistake you can make as a crafting DM. Never ever just make one because you're going to want more. So I've been wanting to make some more of these barricades. They are fantastic for enemies to hide behind. It grants them cover. They can shoot arrows through the slits and they really dress up a table really quickly. Cheap to make, not that difficult. Before I jump into the build here, I just want to say thank you to the fine folks at dicebar.com for sponsoring this video. They have everything you need to play a game of D&D. As long as the only thing you need is dice, because that's what they sell. They sell a whole bunch of dice and they sell them for a good price. They didn't make that rhyme. I did. Dicebar.com, they got a wide selection of dice and a few other items that you can pick up for your game. The best part for you is that they have given me a Black Magic Craft promo code. The code will be in the description of this video. If you use that promo code on your order, you will receive free expedited shipping anywhere in the world. Even you upside down Australia people. Let's build some barricades. The main thing you're gonna need for this build is an assortment of wooden popsicle sticks and coffee stirrers. I'm gonna use the narrower coffee stirrers for the frame of these barricades and the wider popsicle sticks for the actual wood pieces that are nailed to it. In order to make popsicle sticks and coffee stirrers look good in these kind of projects, it's really important that you put in some effort into kind of carving them up. If you just use them like flat pieces of wood, they're gonna look like popsicle sticks. So I like to use a rotary tool with a sanding drum on it to really bevel the edges and make them not straight. And I use the edge of the sanding drum to kind of gouge and make uneven kind of wood grain and basically make this look like it is hewn lumber and not just flat popsicle sticks. For this type of work, I use a rotary tool by Proxon. It's a really good one, it's really nice, but you do need a dedicated power supply that they use for all of their hand tools. So if you have a variety of their hand tools like the hand cutter, this is a good purchase, but if you just wanna get a rotary tool, you can pick up a cheap battery operated Dremel on Amazon for like under 30 bucks with some bits. I'll put a link to both the Proxon one and the cheap Dremel one in the video description. I should also point out that this is very dusty work and you don't want to be breathing in these fine wood particles so you should definitely be wearing some sort of a dust mask and be vacuuming up your space after doing this. Now that you've got an assortment of these wood sticks kind of gouged and sanded, it's time to start cutting them to length for the build. Because my dungeon tiles are three by three, I like to make my scatter terrain to that same sort of form factor. So I'm gonna make these little barricades three inches long. So for each barricade that I wanna make, I'm gonna cut two of the coffee stir sticks down to about three inches. It is absolutely not important to get these cuts looking good or straight. Actually, it's better if they look as crappy or broken as possible because you want to make them look like a bunch of goblins tore up the damn floor to make these barricades. For the popsicle sticks, I cut them down to around an inch-ish, sort of, maybe a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, give or take, long enough that a mini can stand behind them and be covered. Again, you don't need to do nice cuts here. 
use a variety of scissors, snips, knife, whatever, and mostly break these cuts so that they look really jagged. It's also a nice touch if you take these popsicle sticks and start splitting them apart so that they don't all have the same width or straight edges. Just do a little gouge with an X-Acto knife and then split them in half and they will naturally separate into a variety of different sizes and shapes and it's gonna look way more gnarly. Assembly is pretty easy. You basically are gonna take your coffee stirrers, put some glue on two of them and just start laying down your boards. But what's important to take note of here is that when you sanded and carved these pieces with the rotary tool, one side is left totally flat. That's the sides that you want to glue together so that your carved up surface of the supports and your carved up surface of the boards are facing out on each side, but you have two flat surfaces to glue together. And you don't want to put these boards too close together and you don't want to make them too straight. Make it look like they were built very haphazardly and they're going to look a lot better on your table. I wanted these to look like they had pieces of raw hide stretched across the wooden slats to give more protective cover. So to do this, I just took some regular construction paper and ripped little pieces that were about the right size and shape. I placed these pieces on the barricades and marked out spots where they kind of overlapped the boards and marked little dots. I could then use those points and poke little holes to make it look like that's where these were attached to the boards. I applied a thin layer of white glue to the back of the paper and just stuck them into place. I needed a way for these barricades to actually stand up. So I wanted to use little supports that looked almost like logs. So I took some small wooden dowel and I carved and textured it the same way I did on the popsicle sticks using my rotary tool. I then cut these into little short segments. Didn't really worry about one end looking really rough, but I did flatten out one end of each piece using the rotary tool so that they would attach nicely. Now this connection point would be a bit precarious and I didn't want to risk it by using white glue or even hot glue. So I decided the best way to make this connection would be using some five minute epoxy. This stuff is super strong and I don't worry about connection points breaking when I use it. Even though this epoxy sets up really quickly, it doesn't grab fast enough to hold a piece like this in place and it just fell apart. So to overcome this, I just used a bit of poster tack on my mat to hold the barricade upright while the support bracket was glued in place and the epoxy cured. It worked fantastic. Now this right here is the reason that I use the epoxy. This stuff is strong. These pieces can get thrown around your game table and you're not gonna have to worry about them breaking. To make these barricades a little bit more intimidating, I'm going to dress them up with some spikes using a combination of wooden toothpicks and these plastic arrows. I just break them to the length that I want and put a little dab of white glue to hold them in place. This might seem like it's not going to be strong enough, but once it dries, it will be plenty strong. For the plastic arrows, I actually found that on some spots I could slide them behind the construction paper and that would both look cool and be a really secure way to bond them. If there was any connections that I didn't really trust the white glue on, I used a very small dab of hot glue. To prime these, I used an aerosol gray primer. It was faster to dry than my usual Mod Podge and quicker and easier to get in all the little nooks and crannies. And since there was no foam on this, I didn't have to worry about anything melting. It would have been better to use brown if I had it. I just didn't have any on hand. So that meant that I then needed to do a coat of brown craft paint. Next, I added a coat of this kind of golden brown color that I like to use on wood. It's called Fawn, but you can use any sort of golden brown here. That will work just fine. I also did a pretty minimal dry brushing in this kind of suede tan color just to hit some of the edges of the wood and make them look a little bit more worn and ragged. 
to paint out the leather hide, I switched to some miniature paint from Reaper just because I had some colors that I thought would work really well. I tried out this redstone brown color and I really liked the way that looked. And then I also tried this olive skin color for the other piece, but I realized it just blended in too much with the wood. So in the end, I painted them all this kind of redstone brown color. Next, I painted out all of these spikes in a kind of iron metallic. I used this iron breaker color from Citadel, but really any kind of medium gray iron metallic from any type of paint, craft paint, whatever, would all work fine. I then used a brown wash to get into all of the crevices and kind of mute that wood color a little bit. Here I decided not to use a homemade wash, but instead use the Agrax Earth Shades from Citadel. Normally on terrain, I find these washes to be too expensive, but these are small pieces and these washes do really, really work well. So I prefer them when working on something like this. Using a detail brush and some tan paint, I painted in some little rope lines to imply rope holding on these pieces of hide as well as the spikes. I also dressed up a few of the pieces of hide with some little adornments, a skull, a handprint, whatever kind of symbolism you want to put some fear into the hearts of your players. If you need to pick up some crafting supplies and you want to pick up the stuff that I use and recommend, head on over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store with links to all of the stuff that I recommend. Purchasing items through those links costs you nothing extra, but Amazon sends me a small commission that helps fund these videos. Another way you can help fund these videos is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Those funds go a long way to helping me make these videos every Every single week and of course don't forget to use that promotion code in the video description for dicebar.com where you can pick up a set of gaming dice shipped to your door expedited shipping for free anywhere in the world all right guys i hope you found this video useful and inspiring if you did hit that like button drop me a comment below subscribe if you are not already a subscriber and if you build your own set of these cool barricades i'd love to see them Post them on the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook group for the whole world to see. Until next week, guys, cheers and happy crafting.